Hi everybody. Hola, buen día, buena tarde. Um, and I just want to introduce and, and talk a little bit about the video that we're going to look at today. Um, I'm putting out a definite and indefinite article video um, explaining how to apply um, these kind of rudimentary um, grammatical structures. Um, so follow along with the notes. Um, you can check out my website and subscribe to uh, my email uh, list and receive a copy of the notes um, or whatever goodies I have going out uh, month to month, week to week, however often um, these emails go out. Um, if it's something that seems useful to people, I will push them out more and more. Um, so um, without taking up too much time, here's uh, definite and indefinite articles in European Portuguese. Um, let me know if you have any questions. All right, so today, hoje, vamos falar de, uh, acerca de artigos e substantivos. Artigos e substantivos. Or articles and nouns. Okay, so we're going to talk about definite articles as they pertain to nouns and indefinite articles. as they pertain to nouns. So definite articles, as in English, we would refer to, you know, to the. And then indefinite articles, which in English we would go with either a or an. Okay, so that's, that's the goal for today. We're going to get through um, explaining how to use our, uh, articles and nouns, artigos, um, substantivos. Um, so first off, we're going to start with um, definite um, articles. Let's create a new page. My apologies. So definite articles. Um, generally, um, in Portuguese, when we're talking about articles. We put up here again our reference in English and our native tongue, the. And then in in Portuguese you have um, a lot more variety to that. So you're gonna have the singular definite articles, and then you're gonna need to think about them in terms of masculine and feminine um, and then we'll also later on think about them in terms of, of quantity so you first have to think about them in terms of gender and again it's not that any word is specifically masculine as it pertains to males or feminine as it pertains to females it's just the the way that the language developed um, you know coming from a, a Latin-based language, the way that it developed in Portuguese, um, as in Spanish, um, and French as well, and um, there are, there are gender attri attributions to each um, noun, person, place, thing, concept. Um, so you have to think about them in terms of gender, as well as in terms of quantity. So the first singular definite article as it pertains to masculine um, nouns is the word U. It's just a letter O, no accent on it, um, just U. Okay, so it's, it almost sounds like like U, but without the U part, the U, the U and U. So it's U if you have an O there. And then you have the feminine A. Uh, U and A. Uh. U E, uh, U, uh. So that's singular definite article. Uh, then you have your singular indefinite 
article. It's un and uma, which in English would translate to um, uh, a or an. All right, so you have this matrix here. Um, and again, this is in terms of gender. Well, I should have just put definite. I'm going to do this in definite articles. That looks cool, right? Uh, good save there. Uh, so indefinite articles, un and uma. So these would refer to, let me clean this up a little bit here. See. And if you'd like a copy of these um, notes, um, sign up for my um, email, my newsletter at sapedrosa.com and I'll, I'll send you a copy of, of these notes for this video. And then you can take them with you and study them. You know, or you have a copy on your, on your phone that you can refer to. Um, you know, I send out, send out um, ongoing emails with these sorts of brief um, expl grammatical explanations. I know some of us like this sort of thing. Um, it's not for everybody, but all right. So um, again, sapedrosa.com. Check it out. Sign up for the email, and uh, you'll re you'll receive these as as I put them out there. Um, all right. So we're gonna move on and look at them in the in, in parentheses definite articles in terms of number. So let's uh, get a new page here and. Uh, there's something about doing this in real time. Could have this all polished and nice and neat for you, but this is, you know, it's in, in real time. Um, something more authentic about that. So it is what it is. Um, so now we're going to look at it in terms of number, in terms of quantity, when we're thinking about definite and indefinite articles. So in, again, I'm going to do that. Definite articles or in Portuguese, artigos, artigos, indefinidos. Let's give you the translation there. And it translates directly. Um, so now we're going to look at them in terms of number, quantity. So you have uh, the plural definite article. Remember before, the singular were u and a, uh, right? So again, masculine, feminine. Let me do the matrix again. So then we'll do plural, indefinite, masculine, feminine. And for the definite articles, you have uj and uj. Uj. And uz, and at least in in my pronunciation, again, we're I'm I'm from the my family's from the Silver Coast, uh, Costa de Prata. Um, we're on the um, in, on the stretch between um, Peniche and well, we're near Figueira de Foz. I don't know why I'm giving you Peniche. Like we're 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 on Figueira de Foz, just south of Figueira de Foz, um, on the Silver Coast. So that's the pronunciation from uh, that that. As, as it's spoken where, where I grew up, where I, where I went to school and, and learned how to speak um, Portuguese. Um, so the, the way that we pronounce our S's at the ends of, ends of words um, is not, you know, it's entirely different than what you'll hear, say, in, in Brazilian Portuguese, right? Well, they may say, os, os animais. So in, 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 in Portuguese, the S's tend to have a Z sound, at least in, in my pronunciation. So, uj and uj. Uj and uj. Um, for the definite articles. So, for the indefinite articles, you're going to have uj and umaj. It's pretty pretty logical, right? Um, so, for the plural, we again, we would just go with this would be the translation of the. We don't have the differentiation in terms of masculine, feminine, singular, plural in English. Um, but in terms of plural, we do for the indefinites. This would be some. Right? Can I have some 
fill in the blank with, you know, some some random noun or, uh, yeah, so some chairs, some notebooks, some arms, some fingers, so not to any specific one, just some, right? Um, where when we're talking about definite articles, we're talking about the very specific, hey, that chair right there, that's like the, the chair that, that, that I'm looking at right now. Um, so just to give a few examples of these. So if we're talking about um, a word like a uh, book, like the word livro, word livro, it's the O will indicate that it's a masculine. It's only one, right? There's no S there at the end to make it plural. So we're going to think singular, right? So we're going to talk about the specific book. So the book. So in English, it'd be the book. So here, it would have to be U, right? So we have U, U, um, singular, singular, masculine, masculine. That's it. So let's say, for example, uh, we made it plural. We made livrus, talking about those those specific books, the books right there, the more than one, we would simply do uj livros, right? So that would be the books. In English, there's no there's no change. It was just talking about the the pile of books. But in English, in, in, sorry, in Portuguese, you have to have the 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 matching up of the article, um, gender and, net and number with the same um, same concepts in the in the noun that we're thinking of. So now let's look at um, a word like window. In Portuguese, it'd be, in English, we'd have the window, right? In, in Portuguese, the word is janela, janela. So now we're looking at a feminine singular uh, word, right? So we'd have to come here with a janela a uh, janela and just one more time just to differentiate here if we were talking about the windows we would have as janelas as janelas all right so there you have it in terms of the uh definite articles um so let's take a quick look at what this might look like for the indefinite articles. All right. So let's think about those same um, concepts, right? O livro, the book. But let's instead of the book, let's think about it as... Uh, A book, right? Let's let's not even think about the book. It's a book. Let me do that a little bit neater for you. A book. So if we're just thinking about, give me a book, any book, not even not a specific book. It's some indefined, uh, some undefined book. Um, I just need one book. So in Portuguese, um, it would be because livro again is masculine and singular. We would think about it in terms of um livro. So it could be, I mean, if you know the, the numbers in Portuguese, it's one book, right? Give me one book. It doesn't matter which book. A book. Um, but let's say, for example, we needed some books. Some books, right? Make it plural. Then we'd become uns livros. It again, just have to match up. Unge, sorry. Unge livros. You'll never have an M with an S. So usually the M will transfer to an N. Um, and then you have unge livros. All right? So let's think about it in terms of some windows, right? Just to keep the same words so you can keep seeing um, the same words being used here. Hopefully they'll start to sink in. So the word for window was janela. So in this case, it's janela. We'll start, yeah, we'll start with with a, uh, like we did before. So we'll come back to that in a second. So now we're just looking at a window. We'll come back to that after. A window, any window. So we're going to look at and look at it and say it's just a feminine 
singular in this case. So it'll be uma janela. But again, doing the same thing we did up here in this, try to do it in the same order we did before so, so as not to confuse you. But uh, again, authenticity here <laughs> at S.A. Pedrosa uh, language learning. Uh, let's look at it again in term of terms of some windows, right? Let me just let me just clean this up. Some windows, some windows. Then you'd simply just add the s because it's no longer singular anymore. You'd have a plural. Umaj, janelas. Now now you have some windows. So you just got to remember. U. Ooh, uh, when we're thinking about gender, ooh and uh, ooh and uma for the definite and indefinite. Remember, definite articles are the, indefinite articles are a and an. Then we look at the indefinite articles, the, but in this case they're plural in English. We don't have to worry about that distinction so much. Um, and then some examples, definite articles, and then... Uh, indefinite articles thinking about it in terms of some some non-specified noun but the idea of a noun the the unobjective unobjectivity of nouns <laughs> all right um so yeah leave it at that for now take care